Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kaylee and these are my books. So today I have a Neck Alley reading vlog, which if you don't know what Neck Alley is, Neck Alley is a website that releases arcs of ebooks and audiobooks. Arcs are advanced reader copies of books, so you can read books early for free as long as you review it on NetGalley. If you don't review the books, then you'll get a lower ratio of books that you have reviewed and therefore won't be approved for books in the future. Uh, NetGalley is not just for big book reviewers, it's for anyone. I don't have a following really anywhere and I was still able to get a lot of really highly anticipated books, so if you're interested in NetGalley, you should go for it no matter who you are. Now, the problem with NetGalley, though, is that it's so easy to just go through and click request, 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 re request, and then you get suddenly like 30 books and your ratio is really low because your ratio is just based off of books you re reviewed versus the books that you've been approved. So the more books you've approved, then the worse and worse your ratio gets until you've actually, you know, reviewed those books. And I got approved for a ton of books and then my ratio went from like 50% all the way down to 18%. And you're supposed to have at least an 80%. 80% and I had an 18%. No, 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 no. <laughs> so this vlog is me trying to catch up with my net galleys and get my percent up higher. In this vlog, I read four books one was kind of a backlist because I didn't get to it in time, but the other three are highly anticipated. So the first book I read is The Younger Wife. The second book I read is Suburban Hell. The third book I read is The Villa. And the fourth book I read is Daisy Darker. All of these books will be linked below if in case you want to read more. But for now, let's cut to the clips where I actually read these books. Hey, so I'm just checking in. I'm about... 40% of the way through Sally Hepworth's The Younger Wife, and I am not loving it so far. It's actually kind of sending me into a reading slump. It's been like three days since I've picked up the book, and normally I read thrillers within a day, maybe two days. So the fact that this book is going on four days of reading it, and I'm only 40% of the way through, not a good sign. So the characters, they're interesting. The characters are interesting. Basically, all of these people, it follows uh, two daughters, the father, and then the father's new wife, which is the same age as the daughters. And it follows the daughters trying to get used to their father dating someone and being engaged to someone that is their age, much, much younger than their mother. And it follows the younger wife trying to become friends with these daughters. And if you're saying, hmm, that doesn't sound like a thriller, that's my main problem with this book, is it doesn't feel like a thriller. It feels like a slice of life contemporary story so far. And I'm just not into that. I want it to be more thrilling. And we've seen some hints of maybe some thrilling things to come. The prologue starts with something dramatic happening at the wedding. So I think we're going to get there. But then after the prologue, the book starts a year before the wedding. So... There's a lot of time for us to be ramping up to this thrilling end moment. And I'm hoping the rest of the book becomes worth it. But so far, 42% of the way in, nothing has really happened that I'm interested in. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to push through it because it is a NetGalley book and I want to get a review out. And I don't feel comfortable reviewing the book without finishing it. But it's a struggle. So basically, I'm sitting on this couch and I'm not allowed to move from this couch until I finish this book. Kindle says that I have about two hours left of reading it, so this is where I will be for the next two hours. Also, I'm realizing how rough I look in these clips. Uh, okay, I just woke up. Cut me some slack. I just woke up. I'm not going out anywhere. The goal is to read the rest of this book before I do anything, and that includes get ready for the day. Okay, bye. So I am 84% of the way through The Younger Wife right now and I wanted to do one more check-in before I finish the book because it is annoying me so much right now. It's so annoying. It has one of my least favorite tropes where one of the 
characters in the story is seemingly unreliable and doesn't know if they're quote-unquote going crazy or if these bad things are actually happening. And I I don't view this as a spoiler because it's just my opinion. I don't know if I'm right or not. But it seems so obvious to me that these bad things are really happening. So it's so frustrating to see these characters get so much proof that bad things are happening and then ignore it all and be like, ah, no, I am quote unquote crazy. So I don't know. We'll see how it ends. It's sitting between a one and a two star right now. So I finished the book. Um, Yeah, one star. (laughs) I really didn't like it. I hated the end twist, really unsatisfying. It was trying to do too many things and ended up doing all of the things badly. I'll talk more about my thoughts in a more formal clip, but I just wanted to check in one more time from the couch saying, I finished the book. It was bad. Don't recommend. I'm going to go take a shower now. So I finished The Younger Wife earlier today, and I said in that clip I gave it one star. I stand by that. I give it one star and I wanted to take this opportunity to give you a little bit more context for why I gave it one star. The main issue I felt with this story is I feel like it couldn't decide whether it wanted to be a family drama or a thriller. And because the focus was on both these interesting family dynamics and, um, you know, the shocking thriller dynamics, while a book can do both, this book, the focus was pulled evenly between the two and it ultimately felt like neither the family drama nor the thriller was done well and therefore it just wasn't a compelling book if you looked at it as a part of either genre if you wanted a family drama there wasn't enough complex characters there was no emotional impact and if you wanted a thriller most of the story was just uh these family dynamics with a little bit of a thriller ending a shocking ending And that brings me to my next point. The ending was terrible. I really disliked the ending. I think the end twist was there for shock value and it wasn't set up within the story at all. Um, And in fact, I think the end twist undid a lot of any interesting work that was going on in the story. You saw in an earlier clip, I said I wasn't sure if I was giving this book one or two stars. And um, if the ending hadn't been what it was, it would have gotten two stars. But the ending undid anything that was giving it those two stars. Any of the um, uh, mental health discussions that were going on, I felt were ultimately undercut by this end twist. So with my one star rating, I would not recommend this book to anyone. If you want a family drama, there's a million other books you could read. I'm thinking of Lisa Jewell's The Family Upstairs, if you want a family drama slash thriller. Or if you're just interested more in the family drama, you can think about uh, reading Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, or even The Vanishing Half um, has some of the interesting sister dynamics that this book attempted to produce. Or if you want a thriller to give you some some surprises, some shocks, I mean, you could pick up almost any other thriller out there. Uh, this was a domestic thriller, and I felt like the tropes that were in the the, um, the Younger Wife were all tropes we've seen before. It didn't do anything unique. So if you're wanting a domestic thriller, you might as well pick up one that at least does those tropes well. I mean, you can tell from the title, The Younger Wife, you know, you kind of know what you're getting into with that title. How many domestic thriller titles have the word wife in the title? A lot. And ultimately, this book was a huge letdown. Um, So fingers crossed my next NetGalley book is much better. The next book I'm going to pick up for this vlog is Suburban Hell by Maureen Kilmer. This book releases August 30th, and this book is a horror comedy similar to Grady Hendrix's book, uh, specifically the Southern Book Club's Club, <laughs> specifically the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Uh, this book presents itself as the My Best Friend's Exorcism, also by Grady Hendrix, meets Bad Moms. So basically, a group of moms in this uh, suburban neighborhood live on a cul-de-sac. They meet up for wine nights. They want to build a little fort outside so that none of their spouses or kids can bother them when they have their wine nights. And they accidentally release a demonic force into their suburban uh, area. And weird things happen. Creepy dolls happen. Some burn marks happen. People are getting possessed. People are getting haunted. And it's this group of moms just trying to figure out how the heck 
to get rid of this demonic force that they've unleashed in their neighborhood. I am really excited for this book. I'm a huge fan of Grady Hendrix's novels and because this has been compared to My Best Friend's Exorcism and the um, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, both of those books were five stars for me. This has the potential to be another five star read. I have a mini book haul because I went to half price books today and turned in a ton of books, but got enough money to get these two books that I've really been wanting, which is awesome. So the first one I got is a memory called Empire, which is a space book. <laughs> it's a sci-fi space opera book. I think there's going to be a lot of sci-fi politics in it. And I don't know that much about this book. I just know that um, Reagan from Peru's project really liked it. And so I want to read it because I typically like the books that she likes too. And who could pass up that price? And the other book I got is The Name of All Things by Jen Lyons. And again, this is um, a nice hardcover, really good condition, only $8.99, which is awesome. This is book two in her series, and I still haven't read book one, which is The Ruin of Kings. But I really think I'm going to love it, so I figured might as well grab book two when I can get it for super cheap. And it's literally in, like, perfect condition. So, yes, mini book haul. So I just started Suburban Hell and I'm still on the first page, but I wanted to check in because the first line was amazing. It starts, the whole book starts with, none of this would have happened if it weren't for the she shed. <laughs> Love it. I'm fully in. I'm excited. So I'm 15% of the way through Suburban Hell and I'm really enjoying it so far. Things are pretty fast paced. I mean, nothing crazy has happened, but there are signs of the craziness to come already. And so it's not too much slice of life. That was my biggest fear with this um, book was that it would be too heavy on the mom's daily life and not enough on the horror. But you know, even in the first 15%, we're seeing some weird things happen. The demon has been released, although the characters don't know it yet. And we are seeing some effects. And of course the characters don't know that this is the effect of a demon yet but it's going to be really fun to see how they come to the conclusion that it's a demon. I don't know, it's ridiculous, but I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. We are quite tired though, so I don't know how much more I'm going to read of it tonight. I'm just waiting for a video to finish uploading onto YouTube before we call it a night. I just got out of the shower so my hair is still kind of wet and a bit of a disaster but I wanted to check in really quick because I'm about 30% of the way through suburban hell and there's some pros and some cons I actually don't know if I'm liking it or if I'm not liking it I don't know maybe it's like a three star right now so the pros are the horror is pretty fun you know having a mom group where one of the moms gets possessed by a demon is pretty funny and the horror is gross but also not terribly horror like it's pretty light the horror so far but still very fun um but i feel like it's a bit mean towards other moms and suburban life which I get that the point of this book is to poke fun at Sir Ripon life and being a mom and stuff, but it's kind of reading like, oh, I'm not like other moms. Most moms are basic and uncool and I'm cool because I'm a mom that's different than everyone else. You know, like, like there was a, a point in the book where she was making fun of moms that are involved in the PTA and stuff. And I think we're supposed to like this character and I didn't like her. So I don't know. And also these characters are supposed to be so edgy, but I feel like they don't do anything edgy. I feel like they are just like any other mom, but for some reason they, they view themselves as different because they like to drink beer instead of wine. Like, okay. So to summarize, I don't know. It's fun. It's very on the nose. Like a chapter will end 
everything was perfect in the land of suburban households, except for tomorrow when danger strikes the households. You know, like, like very dramatic and it's, it's, it doesn't leave a lot up to the reader. Um, but I think it's supposed to be campy like that, so I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it could be like a one star or a three star or maybe a four star, but definitely not a five star at this point. Alright, so I'm in my car because I'm about to go pick up groceries, but I wanted to do another check-in. I'm 50% of the way through Suburban Hell, and it's really making me angry. <laughs> I started out loving the humor, and now the humor just feels incredibly obnoxious to me. I thought it would be more like Grady Hendrix's book where he pokes fun, you know, at the situations, but there's a lot of seriousness paired with the silliness, where this book is just completely silly and there's not a lot of seriousness, and it's starting to feel obnoxious to me. And also this book is so mean-spirited to suburban lifestyle. Like I get that there's a lot to make fun of with um, suburb suburban neighborhoods, but also like leave these people alone. They're just living their lives, you know, like, and the the group of moms that we follow that are our main protagonists, they are always picking on the stay at home moms and they feel like they're better because they have jobs. And I'm like, ah, oh, they're bullies. I hate them. And um, the main girl that we follow has no personality. Like she literally, I can't name a single personality trait that she has. And it's just, there's really nothing I'm enjoying in this book anymore. The first horror scene we had was pretty gruesome, so I thought it would lean more into like the dark horror, but all the horror scenes since then have just been silly where they don't feel like horror at all. Like this book is supposed to be a horror comedy, but it doesn't feel like horror to me at all. And so I don't know. I'm going to keep reading it because it's a neck alley book and I want to read it all so I can review it, but dang. We might be having another one star book in this vlog. I don't give out one stars very often. So the fact that this vlog might have two one star books. Ah, I was going to stop the vlog after this book, but I think I might keep going for one more book after. slightly different location. I wanted to give a prettier background for the bad news that I have. I'm giving one star to Suburban Hell. I don't give out one stars very often and somehow in this video there's two books that I'm giving one stars to. I don't know how that happened but I really hated Suburban Hell. I thought that it relied too much on the humor where it just got obnoxious after a while. I think that there isn't enough horror in it for it to even be classified as a horror comedy. It's to me more, much more so a comedy drama. And I found it pretty mean spirited in its um, comedy as well. I know by the end we're supposed to see it as slightly, you know, empowering for these suburban moms. But in my opinion, it never got to the empowering moment and it still stayed just kind of making fun of suburban lifestyles but in a mean-spirited way i know there's lots to poke fun at but in my opinion this just didn't work it didn't work for me and the husbands were all terrible i hated every single husband in there but uh and honestly even all the moms they had no personalities they had slightly different life traits like they did different workouts and had different jobs but that's the only thing that differentiated them. Like they had no personalities. It felt like I was reading a book about like cardboard, card, but ugh, cardboard cutouts versions of characters and not actual characters. And so it's hard to connect to anything that's happening when none of these characters feel like they even could slightly be like a real person. So yeah, I don't recommend this book. I think. I found it funny in the first 25% and then it just got really obnoxious and it stayed obnoxious and got a little bit more mean-spirited throughout the way. 
So would not recommend. I'm very disappointed because I thought that I was going to love it. And I'm really, really hoping the next read I do for this video is good. And I, we don't end up with two one stars and only one book I liked. Let's hope this next book is a hit. So after finishing the very disappointing Suburban Hell, I am incredibly hyped for the next book in this vlog. It's The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. This book actually doesn't come out until January of 2023. So it's a super early um, neck alley that I have. Um, Rachel Hawkins is the author of Reckless Girls and The Wife Upstairs. The Wife Upstairs, I just gave three stars. It was fine. But Reckless Girls, I gave five stars. And it's one of my favorite thrillers of all time. So I'm super hyped for The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. And The Villa is a gothic thriller. So basically, it's about this villa in Italy that um, two different groups of people in two different timelines visit as a vacation house for the summer. So um, the current timeline follows Emily and Chess, two best friends that have kind of drifted apart recently. And they're at this vacation home in um, Italy to work on their books. However, they know it as a murder house based on stuff that happened in the 70s. And so the other point of view that we follow is the 70s timeline where there are some rock stars in the house and their girlfriends and we follow one of the um, rock stars girlfriends Mari Mary I'm not sure if it's Mary or Mari but um basically we know because of the uh, future timeline stuff goes down in the 70s timeline so I'm excited to see how some murder happens in this story and then in the current timeline with the two friends writing their books I think um, they start finding clues about what really happened in the 70s and those clues might contradict what all of the news stories have reported. So I'm really liking the premise. I'm about 25% in so far and nothing has really happened, nothing creepy yet, nothing that's making me kind of question any of the characters. But there are some characters that are really bad friends in the story so I'm curious if the bad friends are going to end up being the villains or if the bad friends are just also involved in whatever horrific events are going to happen. I'm very interested and even though nothing has happened so far in the first 25%, it is reading quickly. I'm interested in all of the characters. So fingers crossed this is not a one star read and possibly fingers crossed this could be a five star read. I'm checking in because I'm 50% of the way through the villa and I'm not loving it. Ugh. I'm not disliking it. So there's still potential for it to be like a three or four star read, but it's definitely not a five star read. So I'm now halfway through and still not much has happened and there aren't a ton of gothic vibes. I know I've seen this story pitched as kind of a gothic Italian villa and it's not really that gothic. Oh hello Teddy. He wants to say hello. Um <laughs> but <ugh. laughs> it's just not much is going on. Mostly people are just writing books and you know I always find it a little bit indulgent when authors write books about people writing books. It's just like such a trope you know. Um and the characters so there are some bad people in this book but they aren't evil people they're just kind of bad in an annoying way and these people that are bad in an annoying way are my least favorite type of characters because they're not like villains that you can be intrigued by or shocked by or kind of root for secretly or even villains that are just evil in a fun way these are characters that are not evil they're just bad in a very mundane way and therefore are pissing me off because they remind me of like real people but if a real bad person was uh you know like amplified and it's difficult for me to imagine these terrible people having such long-lasting friendships that are in this book. So for example, in our present timeline, we have Emily and Chess, and they have been best friends for a long time. And they have drifted apart recently, but they're doing this trip to kind of reconnect and both work on their books. 
but Chess is just like a terrible person and Emily is a very normal person so I'm like how the heck have they been friends for this long because any normal person would have dropped Chess because Chess is terrible and then how is Chess just okay with being this terrible because doesn't she have any guilt any sort of moral compass I don't know and uh you know playing into the stereotype Chess is a self-help writer and I always uh think self-help writers are a little bit pretentious, a little bit condescending, and chess is all of the above. But yeah, and so I'm talking about these bad people characters such as chess because they're not adding to my enjoyment of the book. In fact, they're detracting from my enjoyment of the book. And I'm really hoping some murder stuff happens soon or some actual scary stuff happens soon because just reading about all this petty stuff is not entertaining. And don't get me wrong, I like rich people drama, you know, like the type of domestic thriller that's all about rich people being terrible to each other. But for some reason, the, the drama in this book is just annoying me. But yeah, I'm gonna keep reading. Um, I think I'm gonna try to finish this book tonight. That way I can finish up this vlog. So Teddy and I are signing off for now and I'll check in once I finish the book. I have another mini book haul for this vlog. My book of the month came in and I got three books this time. Went a little crazy, normally only get one book, but they just had such good options. I was really excited for all of them. So Riley Sager's The House Across the Lake. This is Riley Sager's newest thriller and it seems pretty tropey with domestic thriller, you know, a troubled married couple, wife disappears, what happened, question mark. Um, it hasn't been getting great reviews, but I love all of Riley Sager's books, like even the ones that people don't like, so I'm still hopeful I will like this book. And then Upgrade by Blake Crouch. This is the one I am most excited about out of the three books I got. I absolutely loved Blake Crouch's Dark Matter and Recursion, and Upgrade is just his newest sci-fi thriller book. Um, and there's not a lot of authors out there doing sci-fi thriller, so Blake Crouch is really unique to me and I love the sci-fi thriller genre so the fact that there's a new sci-fi thriller from Blake Crouch and his other books have been five stars yes 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 excited and then I also have Ruth Ware's The It Girl this is Ruth Ware's newest thriller um I'm not super sure what this is about I think it has a college campus setting and about a girl that goes missing at the college campus I think. I'm not completely sure though. And Ruth Ware is another one like Riley Sager that I like all of her books, especially her recent ones. Um, even one by one, a lot of people did not like her um, most recent book, but I loved it. So I'm still pretty hopeful that I will really enjoy this thriller, especially with the college setting. I love a good academic thriller. All right, so I'm in my bathroom. What's up? <laughs> I'm putting on some makeup because I want to film some videos, but I figured I would update you all on The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. Unfortunately, this is a uh, anticlimactic update because I'm giving it two stars. I just really hated it. I mean, okay, I didn't really hate it because I gave it two stars, not one star. And I think some people could like this book. It is doing something cool with um, it being set in the same house and um, both point of views following different groups of people in different times at this same house. However, it really never followed through on those gothic house vibes. It was just some random vacation house they were at. Like I couldn't even picture what the house looked like. And so it's just, I don't know, the house was, it was not an interesting part of the book for me and I think it was supposed to be because there's sometimes lines in it like the house never forgets. And I'm like, yeah, this house forgot. I don't know, this house is just a basic house. And the characters that were annoying me that are supposed to be bad people in the book never got their comeuppance. <laughs> and so, you know, the characters could have worked for me if they got their um, bad endings and it was really satisfying in the end. However, in my opinion, the bad characters didn't get what they truly deserved. And I will amend that statement by saying that some of the bad characters got some bad endings and some of them didn't. So it's not a spoiler going in. Some get bad endings, some, some don't. You don't know which is which, but for me, it just wasn't enough. And then the ending, the ending. So 
I thought the ending, it was surprising, I guess, but it was surprising in how anticlimactic it was. That's what surprised me with how um, the ending just didn't feel like a thriller ending. It was such a letdown. And I didn't predict it, but it's because I predicted some sort of interesting ending happening. And this ending wasn't interesting at all. Uh, you know, like both, both plot lines, the current day plot line of the two women writing their book, meh, pay no attention to my dirty beauty blender, but the past plot line was interesting with all of the rock and roll vibes, right? But the rock and roll vibes just weren't enough. I shut the door because my dog was trying to get into the trash. But like I said, the rock and roll vibes just weren't enough for me. It didn't lean too hard into the rock and roll. It very much felt secondary. And, you know, there was some weird sex stuff going on that I think was supposed to be interesting enough to hold our attention for majority of the book, but it just wasn't interesting enough for me. And like I said, really nothing happens in the plot. Like, even if I was to make this vlog spoilery, 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 sorry, um, and I detail to you every single thing that happened in this book, it would be like a, a 30 second recap because nothing happens. There are some positives to the book. Um, some positives being that the ending does subvert expectations. It's difficult to predict exactly how the ending will wrap up because like my hot take was because the ending was so disappointing. No one would predict that. But you know, some people might like the ending especially because you can't exactly say that the book was predictable. Now, I will say some of the twists, the twists that um, I would have liked were incredibly predictable, so I didn't really like those twists. I think for people that don't need to read about likable characters, they might like the characters a little bit more, where I, I don't mind reading about characters that are unlikable, but in my opinion, these characters were not just unlikable, they were insufferable. <laughs> but you know, that's a, an opinion. Maybe some people like seeing all the drama unfold that these unlikable characters bring about. One thing that I did think was cool in the book was the inclusion of different types of media within the story. So at the end of different chapters, each chapter kind of included the um, current timeline and the 1970s timeline, but then it also included books, um, excerpts from books and excerpts from podcasts and magazine clips and things like that um, that talked about what happened in the 70s and then at the end what eventually happened in the present timeline. So that was fun. I always like when books kind of experiment with news reports throughout the story. And then I have a cheeky little update that there is one more book in this vlog, but unfortunately I didn't really check in while I was reading it because I was just so into it and so excited by it that I kind of just sat down and listened to the entire audiobook in one sitting. And that book was Alice Feeney's Daisy Darker. And I'm so mad at myself that the one book, the one book that I liked in this vlog, I have no check-ins about. Like, come on, Kaylee. I was almost even gonna fake some check-ins, but then I was like, nah, we gotta keep it authentic. But here's me being authentic. I loved that book. <laughs> I'm about to spray my face and I always hate this part of the makeup. Ugh. But anyways, um, so I went into Daisy Darker being super excited. So background on Daisy Darker. Daisy Darker is Alice Feeney's new thriller. Um, I don't remember exactly when it comes out, but I'll put it up on the screen somewhere, the exact release date. It is another Net Galley, obviously, so it isn't released yet. But Daisy Darker is an Agatha Christie, and then there were none retelling. So when people say Agatha Christie and then there were none retellings, they basically mean when a group of people all get put together and they start getting taken out one by one. And we only follow Daisy Darker's point of view. So Daisy Darker, in her point of view, gets called to the island by her grandma, and she's there and she meets her sisters and her mom and her grandma and her niece. And Daisy Darker 
is a very interesting character because this is a thriller that actually only follows Daisy's point of view in both the present and the past when Daisy was a child. I found this point of view set up very interesting because in a lot of thrillers now, we see um, these thrillers following multiple point of views, especially when there's a dual timeline. So the fact that we only got one person's point of view was very refreshing. It was actually quite fun to read. And so the premise of the story is people in the family start dying and they're alone on this island in this house. And so it's either someone is there with them that they don't know about or someone in the family is taking everybody out. So that's the basis for this thriller. Now with Alice Feeney, you're gonna expect a big plot twist and we got a big plot twist in this story. I saw this plot twist coming and I was pretty uh, sure of it coming. However, I still loved the plot twist. And it's because it's a plot twist I haven't seen done before. I thought it was so fun, so inventive. And I love that I just read a new plot twist in a thriller and I've read so many thrillers. So the fact that I got a new plot twist, so cool. I liked both the flashback scenes and the current scenes. And I just thought it was a very fresh take on a retelling that has been done many times now. So I gave this book 4.5 stars and I'm only taking away half a star for me being able to see the plot twist coming. But again, that's such a personal um, thing of whether or not you're gonna see that plot twist coming that I'm very intrigued to see the reviews that come out once this book is fully released to see if lots of people think it's predictable or only some people think it's predictable or am I the outlier that thought it was predictable? We'll see. So now that I've read all of those books, you can see that this vlog did not go how I wanted it to go. I am typically not a picky book reviewer. Like it takes a lot for me to give out a one star and honestly, even a two star, I typically give out three stars or above. The problem with this vlog is I was trying to make sure to read the entirety of these books because I didn't feel comfortable giving a full review on NetGalley of these books if I didn't actually read all of the book. And therefore, I think my reading ratings suffered because I was reading through books I would normally have DNF'd. As you can see, I gave out two one stars, one two star, and one 4.5 star. So obviously the only winner in this vlog was Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. The other books all were not great in my opinion. The two star was The Villa by Rachel Hawkins, but then Suburban Hell and The Younger Wife both got one stars. And therefore for it to get a one star, I mean, that means I think no one would like this book. So one star, so Suburban Hell and The Younger Wife, I don't think you should read them. Straight up, you shouldn't read it. The two star, The Villa by Rachel Hawkins, I admit it could be something you would like, so therefore read it if you're really interested in it, but if you're not, it's definitely one to skip. But now for the big reveal. My rating started at 18% and it has risen to, drum roll, 38%. <laughs> still not great. I mean, 38%, we're still in a very much failing territory but I did raise it 20% with this vlog. So I'm holding off on the request for now. I'm gonna make this vlog uh, series where I continuously try to improve my NetGalley rating. And um, the next installment of the series will be me reading uh, romance books because I have a lot of romance books on there. So stay tuned if you're a romance reader. But the thriller and horror installment of this vlog was uh, not too much of a success. <laughs> so takeaways. Read Daisy Darker, probably avoid the rest. Thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed this, please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.